what a blessed song for us to sing. Hard fighting soldier. Yeah. Um, and if you were here at our Bible study, as soon as that came up, I was like, well, wow, that's a conflict. Amen. <laughs>
I'm sorry, Jeremiah 8, verse 8, we see Jeremiah weeping. He says, when I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to comfort myself. I'm trying to encourage myself. Uh, I'm trying to tell myself, get up, man. I'm trying to tell, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get over this thing, but, but it's with me. I, I can't shake this feeling. Verse 20 says the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Uh, it's hard for me to get over a thing that I'm still in. Amen. People coming to me and saying, you ought to just, you ought to be over that thing by now. Well, just because you over it by now, that don't mean I'm over it. Amen. Uh, just because when it happened to me, uh, it just took me a couple of weeks. Well, I, I'm not there. I'm still there and I'm still hurt. He says in verse 21, for the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. Uh, he said, we're so intimately connected. I see you hurting and I hurt. Amen. Uh, many of us are not familiar with people like this that, that genuinely care about us. So they're hurt because we hurt. Uh, I want to see you do well. I, I want to see you do good. He says, well, because my people are hurt, I am black. Uh, what does that mean? I'm, I am in sorrow. I'm covered in sackcloth. Uh, I'm covered in ashes. Astonishment has taken hold on me. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 1 was read into our hearing this morning as Jeremiah said, oh, that my head were waters, my eyes were a fountain of tears. I cry and I can't stop crying. Yeah. I, I, I can't control it. Amen. You ever been there before? I don't want to cry, but it, I, just, I, have to, I just have to cry. Yeah. Uh, the I can't stop. The tears are from flowing. Yeah. That, that I might weep day and night for the slain of Because he sees the people's transgression. And not for those of us who want to do our wrong. On, those of us who want to do our dirt. And we feel like everybody ought to just shut up about it. Man. 
that the people of God are different. The, the way people approach this thing called church. The way people approach this thing called religion. The way people even think about this being that we call God is messy. Thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's right. Come on, we got a problem. Mm-hmm. Being obedient. Mm-hmm. Come on, that's right. It's better to obey. Come on, brother. That's that. Right. Right. He said, you got somebody that's watching over your soul. Mm-hmm. You got somebody that's interested in where you're going to spend eternity. Yeah. And said to you, hey, this is how you need to live. This is how you need to conduct yourself. Wherefore the Lord has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. 
for these things I weep. My eye, my eye runs down with water because the comforter that should relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy has prevailed. Yes, they have heard that I sigh, they hear that I cry, and there is none to comfort me. When I cry, I'm crying all by myself. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad, they're glad that thou hast done it. Thou wilt bring the day thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. Jeremiah goes on in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's wife, shall he turn to her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers? Yet you return to me again, says the Lord. Lift up your eyes unto the high places. Yeah. See where you have not been lying with. Come on. And the ways hast thou sat with them as the Arabian in the wilderness. You polluted the land with your whoredoms and your wickedness. And yeah. doctrinal point number two, the preacher has to preach through the tears. Okay? Yeah, yeah he's heard, but he, he, but he still has to deliver the message of God. And, and what a stern message, what a, what a difficult message, what a difficult message for him to deliver, uh, even though he himself is hurting. Yeah. Uh, another scripture says that uh, here's the, the encouragement that comes from God. He that ministers, let him wait on his ministering. Oh, okay. What are you saying? God is saying, I know you have needs, and, and I know you hurt, and I know you have trouble, but, but you still serve uh, until I send somebody to serve you. Okay. Yeah. Your life that truly care about you, baby. 
you know. Truly, he said, you are as treacherous as a wife that leads her husband. Mm -hmm. The way you dealt with one another is the way you deal with me. And this, is, this is what I say to, to husbands and wives when they're trying to pair up. Be careful. This is why the Bible is saying that your relationship is supposed to be a reflection of God and his relationship to his people. Like your relationship is supposed to be a reflection of, and, and Paul says, I know this is a difficult thing that I am saying, but I speak of Christ concerning his church. And you have to have a spiritual mind and you have to be able to see even through your marriage and see even through the relationships that we have with one another. Do we deal with one another in a, in a beautiful, in, in, a, in a spiritual way? Because if we don't deal with one another that way, how can you say you love your wife? And how can you say you love your husband? And how can you say you love your sister? And how can you say you love your brother? And you have such a, a, a distorted relationships with them. Those relationships are relationships of relations are a reflection of relationships that we have with God. So we will preach. That's right. And if we have dissonance among us in our in these familial relationships, how can we be united in one with God and like that? God is saying, no, the same way you deal with one another is the way you deal with me. That's right. That's right. Here's the preacher now to preach mm -hmm. to these treacherous, backsliding, oh. stiff necked, adulterous people. Rebellious. Yeah. Rebellious. The voice was heard in the high places. Y'all preach through the tears, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way. Oh. What are you saying, preacher? We are our own worst enemy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Preacher. Amen. You hurt yourself more than anybody could ever hurt you. Amen. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Yeah. I just had a conversation with a young man this week. And I said, listen, I know you're not going to like this, but I'm just going to say to you what's right. Man, you live in your life in such a way that you're not honoring God. And that I know what that road means. That road leads to a road that's destruction. Yeah. You better stop what you're doing. Every Sunday, you better find yourself in the presence of God. Yeah. You better get in his presence. When you wake up, get down on your knees and pray. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Find yourself engulfed in the presence of God. And if you don't, I, listen, if you do that and you honor God, brother, I pronounce the blessing of God on your life. If you don't, I pray that everything you touch turns to nothing. Okay? You're going to say that to me? Man, I, I pronounce a curse upon you. Woman, if you choose to go to work and make money over worshiping and exalting God, I exactly what you deserve. Mm -hmm. Return! You backsliding children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You people who have, who know the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. You people who know the grace of God. Yeah. You people who know the mercy of God. Give him your whole heart. Amen. 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 God says when you do that, I will heal you. Mm -hmm. I'll heal your backsliding ways. Behold, we come to you. Because you are God. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah goes on verse in chapter and verse uh, Jeremiah chapter 19. He says, Thus saith the Lord. God told me, go into every valley. Proclaim the words that I tell you. Uh -huh. God is saying, listen, after you get done crying, get up and preach. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're human. You're gonna hurt. I understand you're hurt. You're human. I understand your disappointment. But you're human, I understand. Get up. When you get up, Go back to it. Amen. Amen. Okay. You need a break, take a break. You need a minute, take a minute. You need a cry, take a cry. When you're done, tomorrow is what? We're going right back to it. Business as usual. Back on the battlefield. Back on the battlefield. Amen. Uh, my kids always hit me. Every, every day my students walk in and say, Peterson, what are we going to do today? Baby, we're doing the same thing we do every day. <laughs> I'm going right back to it. Same thing. God is saying that to us. Take a break. Cry if you gotta cry. Nothing wrong with crying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You realize that? Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with crying. You know that? Yes. There's nothing wrong with taking a break. You know that? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with taking time off. That's all right. Yeah. God says when you're done with that, get up and go right back to it. Amen. Amen. Say, hear ye the word of the Lord. Yeah. Preach ye be instant. Say what's right when they want to hear them. When 
Amen. And that's the confidence that I take with sharing the word of God and sharing the will of God with me. Hey, that you, you can try to act like you don't hear and you can try to act like you don't understand. But the Bible, the word of God has assured me that you're not going to escape that. No, sir. Now, sometimes I leave you. I say, hey, I'm going to leave you with this, but I know you're going to think about it a little later on. Uh-huh. You're going to think about it when you're by yourself. You're going to think about it when you see this again. You're going to remember that. Somebody did say something to me. You cannot escape the word of God because he's trying to impose his will upon your life. God says, because they've forsaken me. Now, strange this place. And I burn incense in it to other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known. And I fill this place with the blood of innocent. God help us. Not only are we are not honoring God, but we're teaching children.
Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that. Those that were in the high gates of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord, and, and Jeremiah then is left to do nothing but cry out to God, Oh Lord God, you deceived me. <laughs> God, God, you, yeah, you, you, you fool. I thought if I just run in here, and that's what you remember in there, I thought if I just do the right thing, if I just say what he wants to say. Everything was going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. God, I read that story that you showed me about Jonah, and he preached, and the heavens opened up, and God, you fooled me. I thought it was going to be all right. I did your will, and now I, I, I'm being punished for it. I did your will, now I'm losing my job. Uh, I did your will, now I'm losing my house. Um, I did your will. I, I don't know some preachers. This is true. I did your will. Now I'm losing my family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cry to God now. He said, "You deceived me, and I was deceived. But you're stronger than me. <laughs> you prevailed. And me personally, I am in derision every day."
have I opened uh, my cause? So what should we do? What should we do? You gotta preach. You gotta preach through the tears. Amen. Amen. You gotta Amen. preach through the hurt. We have to preach, preach through the pain. Yes. No matter what my own personal circumstances are in life. Mm -hmm. I have to look past my personal and still ensure that I'm serving God. Amen. I still have to do the work of God. I, I still have to do the will of God. Yeah. Even when people are talking about me. Isn't it hard? Isn't that difficult? It's hard. Isn't that difficult when you know in your heart of hearts you're doing what's right. You know, you know that the thing that you're doing comes from a genuine place. And people have a nerve to talk about you. Respond to his calling as we together stand and sing a song of encouragement. 